Hi, I'm Gina Ventola, Practice Manager for Ventola Law. One of the best parts of my job is meeting with business owners. However, at times, it can be difficult to meet in person. That's why I started this show, to introduce you to local business owners in our community. Join me on your virtual coffee, a new kind of networking. Hey everybody, welcome to Your Virtual Coffee, a web show that introduces you to great local businesses in the Denver metro area. Today, my guest is the lovely Mariah Eller. She is the founder of The Rebel Brain, a certified neurosculpting facilitator, master nutrition therapist, and visionary. Mariah worked on Wall Street for 20 years, which left her feeling, you know, overwhelmed by stress, anxiety, and health issues. Through all this, she learned valuable tools to not just navigate, but to rock life with ease and joy, and wants to share her tools with you through workshops and team programs. And with that being said, Mariah, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Gina. It's really an honor to be here. I love doing anything with you. You're just such a joy to be around. So, Maria, I'm not sure. Are you from around here originally? I am not. I'm originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm a Midwestern girl, and, but I came here via New York City. I spent a decade or so out there. And I got to the point where I just needed to, like, stretch my arms out, wanted some dirt, a dog. Dirt and a dog. I, and a little house, yeah. I think you have a pretty good idea for a podcast right there. My dirt, <laughs> some dirt and my dog. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so do you have any ha hobbies or things that bring you joy that, you know, you enjoy doing? Absolutely. And I think that hobbies and knowing the things that can elevate our spirit and our, our sense of um, happiness and joy are s crucial because if we're not having fun, right, what's the point? And life is going to throw all sorts of obstacles at us. So knowing like those hobbies and those things that bring you joy that you can go to um, to help elevate your spirit or your mood when needed to are super important. So for me, um, got a little off topic there. I get into the brain stuff. Uh, it's, I love to go hiking. I like to go hiking with my dogs and gardening and getting in the dirt and um, watercolors. I've really been into watercolors the past year or so. Um, board games. A little known fact about me is I like to play d and I love that so much. Do you go to that place over on Broadway? Oh, Wizard's Chest? Yes. <laughs> I have been there quite a bit. I have to go in there with like very specific intentions or I'll like blow my whole paycheck. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. So your, your biography mentions neurosculpting. Could you share a little bit about what exactly neurosculpting is and how it makes our life great and wonderful? <laughs> well, I would love to. Um, this is something I'm, I'm very passionate about. And I, I was passionate about this before I knew about the modality. So learning about this neurosculpting modality really kind of brought a lot of pieces together for me. Like, what? I can do all of this and this is so cool. Um, so what it does is, Neurosculpting brings together what we know about neuroscience, about our natural neuroplasticity, so the ability to change our minds, basically, to rewire or reshape um, that our thought process, and it brings it together in meditation, so in an actual practice that allows us to basically rewire or re-sculpt our thoughts um, or pa like different patterns that we have in our life, so we always... We always tend to go the same route, you know, like say you change your route, that could in some ways change your mind. It could give you a different perspective on things, help you perceive things differently, um, or even changing our beliefs. So um, it's like teaching our brain to, uh, for an example, uh, teaching our brain to release stress instead of making stress a chronic default, or rewiring an old belief such as I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy, because those those are patterns that we like reinforce and embody over time, but we don't have to because our brains are neuroplastic. We can rewire those. I mean, that's, that's huge to be able to rewire a limiting belief like that. It really gives us unlimited potential. So with that being said, you literally change <laughs> minds for lack of a bad pun. 
correct? <laughs> I help teach people how to change their minds in a direction that they want to so that their stress response isn't controlling everything. And if they want to say, you know, some people want to be better at sports or, you know, so they find a trainer and they, you know, find a program to change their body. And if you want to help um, rewire your belief system and find different ways to navigate so that you're not always in this anxious state or constantly triggered by things, because when we're in times that are, um, I think of this, I think of um, uh, uh, like always, always getting triggered, like you're really on the edge all the time. Like that doesn't, we don't have to stay in that state. We can actually have things thrown at us, have crazy global things thrown at us and just be like, hmm, I'm going to get curious about this instead of get triggered by this. I'm not going to let this affect my body and learn how to shift that chemical balance in the body. Now, what example be of that? such as I feel this, let's say I feel sad over something and then kind of apply some logic to it as well. Say, well, by me being sad, is it helping the situation? Probably not. You know that, yeah. is that kind of? Yeah, I see where you're going with that. Um, well, there's two parts to that. One, sadness is an emotion. Like that's, that's a res emotional response we're having to something. And there's really good parts of sadness. Like it really helps ground us and bring us into the present. So I wouldn't necessarily want to get, <clears throat> excuse me, get rid of sadness. But when it starts to trigger us in a way that causes stress or fear, because fear is, a, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a stress response. And when we start making decisions based on that fear of that might make me sad, so I'm not going to do that. Or uh, I'm a little afraid to do that because it seems scary and it's outside my comfort zone. And I don't want to have that conversation with somebody because I don't know what the outcome's going to be. Like that's where fear starts to override our higher brain. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Thank you. So you also work in nutrition therapy. What role does that play in stress, anxiety, and neurosculpting? Oh my gosh, nutrition is huge. I'm so glad you asked this question because it's, to me, it's so important. And this is where I got into, got interested in the whole brain science thing because of this gut brain connection we have. The basically on a very base level, the food we eat and the quality of it directly affects our brain function. So it can take us, um, the nutrients we ingest are either going to help us thrive or just survive. The, um, oh, go ahead, you have a question? Oh no, I was gonna do a follow up, but I, I want to you to finish your train of thought. <laughs> I can go off on a lot of different train paths here, so <laughs> feel free to rein me back in. Yeah, it's um, nutrition is so, so important in our neurology. It's, you can have the very best, like best nutritional um, setup and uh, quality for your, your, even like down to biochemically for your individual person. But if we're not managing our stress response, which creates a very real and inflammatory response in our body, then the nutrition isn't, it's still, we're still going to be in that state of just survival. We're not going to be in a state of thriving. And the reverse is true too, because they're so, they're so intimately connected where we could be like the Zen Buddha master on the mountain meditating our toes off. But if we're not getting the right nutrients, that's still signaling our brains that it's starving because the nutrient isn't there. Maybe not the food, the food could be there if it's, you know, um, you know, highly processed food, and there's not a, not a lot of uh, nutrients in it. So it's going to still signal the brain so that the brain is still going to be like, wait, we still need the nutrients in order to do this higher level meditation. <laughs> um, so the two go really go hand in hand. And they're super important to have both calming that stress response down and um, nutrient dense foods. Well, you kind of touched on part of my follow up question. But my first part of that, it's a two-parter. So the first part is, do you find that some of these nutrient-dense foods um, benefit different people differently? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, um, for example, um, I try to avoid carbohydrates, especially refined carbohydrates, because of the impact it does on my body. Mm -hmm. Do you find that with 
for different people, different things work or? Um, yes and no, but mostly because of um, intolerances. Uh, and like we, we have variations because we're all biochemically unique, um, but there are still some like broader, um, for example, I, I avoid uh, nightshades, which includes tomatoes, which was one of my, I mean, I would have, I would have had a garden of tomato before chocolate any day and twice on Sunday when I was growing up, but tomatoes don't like me anymore. And the whole nightshade family causes me um, inflammation in my joints and I feel it as well as some other um, like skin issues. So it's not an immediate, um, well, it kind of is an immediate allergy, but not like anaphylactic allergy. So I call it an intolerance for um, ease of conversation basically. <laughs> uh, and so I like for me, that, cause they're super, like the nutrients and tomatoes are so good. There's, you know, many good properties in there, but not for me, like that doesn't work for me. And refined carbohydrates, my, um, my take on those is that for most people, I would avoid them primarily because when they hit the bloodstream, they turn to glucose immediately. So it's like eat, basically like eating sugar and sugar is the number one cause of systemic inflammation in our body. And inflammation is the number one cause of disease and illness. So everything from getting colds frequently to cancer is caused by inflammation. Inflammation is at the core of all that. So everything we can do to calm down inflammation in our body is going to help us have a stronger immune system, better brain function, less brain fog. It'll help with mood disorders across the board. Do you have an infographic or do you think we could collaborate on an infographic that contains like maybe some ways to reduce infl inflammation? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I do have, I've got um, a handout on uh, nutrition in the brain and you know, key nutrients to feeding the brain. Okay. I and actually, I think that's a great idea and yeah. I can put it up on my website and then oh, when people great. join my newsletter list, they get your information. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make okay. sure you get that. So you offer workshops and programs for teams. What is your method for working with businesses? For businesses specifically, um, I have two kind of two different tracks. One is, um, like a lunch hour, either half hour or an hour long class. And what I do is kind of go over the basics of um, the language of the brain. So in that, and then also tools to easily manage stress. And then on the longer programs, which is that second track, I dive more into deeper topics, which help managers and team members become better leaders, help them regulate stress, um, navigate change, because especially in a work environment, change can be really, um, overstimulating or stressful to a lot of people. Uh, you know, the boss, say the boss that calls you up on a Friday says, okay, there's big changes over the weekend. I'll tell you about it on Monday. Who's going to, who's, who's going to freak out about that a little bit? <laughs> Whereas the big changes could be something as mundane as we're painting the whole office uh, and how to navigate that in ourselves. And when we're able to calm our own response down and then also see when somebody else is triggered and how we can help them calm their nervous system down. And then we go from a place of worry and fear and um, anxiety to, and problems, like all the problems and all the issues we need to solve into that other part of our brain, which is this higher, uh, more human, I, I like to call it the higher human brain and it's our prefrontal cortex, but it's the place where we have empathy and compassion, our ability to read and write, um, our big picture thinking, uh, our ability to see into the future, that's where we want to be. We want to be puzzle solving, not problem solving, because puzzles aren't that, puzzles sound like fun, to, you know, I'd rather solve a puzzle than a problem. Um, so helping make that shift can take teams to a whole nother level and the productivity that comes from that, from managing stress response and being able to work together uh, more um, cohesively is incredible, like productivity soars, um, the whole work-life balance and uh, work joy uh, ratios are much, much higher. I like that phrase you just said, the work joy ratio. I, <laughs> I like that quite a bit because obviously that implies that you can experience joy at work. And yes. I kind of have my own definition where I just make a distinction between happiness and joy. 
Mm -hmm. Whereas joy comes from within and it comes out as happiness, not to get too, you know, she, she, foo, foo. But to me, <laughs> happiness is kind of that external manifestation of the existing joy. I like that. That's beautiful. So that kind yeah. of helps me. It's like the way that I define it is like that old song. If you're happy and you know it, do some kind of external manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. So when you use the word joy at work, that uh, that's intriguing to me because it's finding that satisfaction within you that comes out even at work. And I think yes. that's great work that you do to help people get to that point. And it's, I think too, from my own story anyway, and all this comes from um, uh, my, my experiences of, uh, you know, getting, getting to the place and the position that I thought I wanted. And why am I not happy? You know, I, I bought this old church. I renovated it. I have my own business. I have more than I have a couple of businesses. Why am I not happy? This is what I've always wanted. And really digging into, you know, bringing it down, like, wait a minute, I'm, that's because I'm living in a state of chronic worry. I'm anxious all the time. That was the story that was running in my head. So until I could, I could remove that anxiety and shift that balance in my body as well, then I was able to appreciate. And, and this is kind of like where the science and that, you know, the idea of like um, attitude of gratitude gets into it. Um, I don't think we can, ha we, can be, we can just magically be grateful. I feel like there's, it takes a little bit of work to um, first calm that fear down, calm it down enough so that we feel safe. And once we feel safe, then it's a lot easier to embody that sense of joy and you know, express it as happiness or express it as our emotions and let our emotions come out without worry that, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm too happy, something's gonna happen or God, I've been sad for too long, something else is gonna happen. You know, there's you know, adding more um, anxiety into it. It sounds like you do some incredible work with businesses and teams and stuff like that. What makes the rebel brain special or different from other types of businesses like this, that health and wellness type yeah. of business? So I would say um, I'm not, I teach meditation, but I'm not like a woo-woo meditation instructor. Um, and I'm not a life coach. So I'm more of like a brain coach, I guess would be the best way to distinguish that. Um, because I'm teaching that language of the brain to navigate, to sculpt our brain, to get them working for us instead of against us. I have a class that I do with teams. I call it um, why your brain is, how your brain is sabotaging your career. <laughs> because we self-sabotage all the time. And a lot of that is that limbic system in our brain. Like, wait, 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 stop. Don't do that new thing because did you do the dishes? You know, like whatever, whatever comes up. Um, and how to navigate those, those internal dialogues. Mariah, let's talk about power partners. And for the audience, what I mean by power partners are those businesses who target the same client as you, but are not your competition. Um, a great example would be maybe a real estate agent and a mortgage broker because they target the homeowner or future homeowner, but they don't compete with each other. In fact, they work together to help the same client. So with that incredibly long, boring definition, <laughs> Mariah, who is your ideal client? So my ideal clients, I like to call them rebels because one, it's fun. Um, and you know, we wanna, I want people to rebel against this idea that we have to be stressed and anxious all the time. Um, they're typically, they, they feel stuck in this loop of old patterns and chronic stress, or they're seeking a way to break free um, of these patterns and create healthier ones, or they're looking for easy stress management tools, or um, a lot of times they just want to feel a sense of control as well. Uh, typically, they're um, women. I have some men in the programs um, around 40 plus. Uh, they've tried meditation or yoga apps, but that just doesn't, I mean, it might help for, you know, 10 minutes or half an hour or so to kind of calm them down, but they're looking for something more, um, more uh, 
that last longer. What is that word? I'm looking for that word. <laughs> um, they're high achievers. They're definitely high achievers. I work with a lot of high achievers. Um, the confident, driven career folk or entrepreneurs and desiring um, some sort of control amid the chaos of life and needing some real self-care with lasting changes. And they want support and accountability and want to access more joy in life. Oh, I love the last part. Access more <laughs> joy in life. That's we my mission. We all use yeah. that. I want to crank up the global joy volume. That's my mission. You should hashtag that. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> so I made a quick note about people who want to change. Because there's lots of ways yeah. that people can change. And if I kind of narrow it to that, which is still pretty broad, there are lots of other power partners in there that fall into that. I'm thinking hairstylists, <coughs> um, personal trainers would mm -hmm. probably be, um, you already add the nutrition piece, so you're your own power partner. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, well, I also, I actually have nutritionists as power partners too, because I don't, even though I have a master's in it, I don't practice it as its own practice. Um, I weave it in always because it's so important, but nutritionists definitely um, are power partners because I can help with the brain part where they help with like the more full body nutrition uh, and life coaches and business coaches. Um, so a lot of people that are going through transitions and for the, um, like the bigger, the teamwork, um, HR heads, or I think that there's a new name I saw recently, um, business development officers. <laughs> I'm just making a note of that. Plus I love the title. I think I may <laughs> adopt that. Um, Cause I, I do a large so part of creative. business development. You do, you do a ton. You are so creative in everything that you, you bring to your, to the, to the law firm. I love it. So we have several industries out there, which is great. So if you're out there, contact Mariah, see if you, you know, set up a virtual coffee like we're doing here. So speaking of which, what is the best way for people to reach out to you? I can be found on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, The Rebel Brain, or Mariah Ellert. Uh, and my website is therebelbrain.com. My email is me, M-E, <laughs> at therebelbrain.com. Those are the best ways to reach out to me. Well, Mariah, any last thoughts? Yes. Oh, I have so many thoughts. How much time do we have left? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would say to close all of this with... Um, be curious, you know, get curious. One of the ways we can shift out of anxiety is to shift that balance in our brain and that our brain uses a lot of our body's resources. So what I mean by resources is blood, oxygen, and glucose. And the more we can shift that, um, shift those resources to our prefrontal cortex, which is that, you know, that curious, that higher brain where we're better humans when we have empathy and compassion and puzzle solving and innovation ideas, the um, more we're going to have to offer to everybody around us and ourselves. And one of the things we can do to shift that balance is to get curious. Like instead of reacting towards something that's coming at you, getting triggered of like, ah, oh my gosh, this is awful. Wait a minute. This is, what can I, how can I, I wonder what I can do here to help the situation. What can I do to either deescalate or what can I do to innovate? And then you're, you're shifting that balance and you're putting those resources in a higher part of our brain and also moving out of shifting the resources in our body so that we're not getting that stress response. So be curious. Be curious indeed, Denver. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today on your virtual coffee. We could not do this show without you. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, Thanks so much, Tina. Have a great day. Your virtual coffee is sponsored by Ventola Law. Ventola Law, mediation and legal representation at an expert level. You can find them at VentolaLaw.com. Thanks for joining me today. For more information on your virtual coffee, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wait for it, our website at yourvirtualcoffee.com. 
Thanks again for watching and have an incredible day.